thanks to CuriosityStream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. Okay, there's something I want you to visualize with your mind's eye. So if it helps, perhaps close your eyes. In your mind, I want you to imagine the sky. It's really blue. And suddenly it becomes brighter. Then a rainbow appears. You turn your head and another rainbow appears. It's a double rainbow. It's so vivid and intense. Now, how clear is this mental image? Can you see each colour in the rainbow? Can you picture a bird flying in front of it? When some people are asked to picture something with their mind's eye, they just can't. Hey Andy, it's Vanessa, how are you? I'm quite swell, yourself? I'm well, thank you so much now, for Now Andy agreeing. believes he has aphantasia, a condition where you have little or no mental imagery. It's been referred to as blind imagination or having a blind mind's eye. I asked Andy to visualise his breakfast table and, well, his brain uses different strategies to imagine these visual problems. It's more akin to a word cloud, a long list of adjectives that describe the table. If you were to, if you were to take me out of my kitchen and ask me to describe my dining room table, I could tell you things about my dining room table, but if I wasn't told the word was imagine like image i wouldn't use visual metaphors when i imagine a coffee table i'm more imagining concepts about coffee tables now i learned about aphantasia a few weeks ago when andy commented on my last video i don't have any visual memory or imagination and people commenting on articles was exactly how this condition came to be studied in the first place now, we've known that some people have a blind imagination since the 1880s, when Sir Francis Galton asked people to visualise things about their breakfast table. One of the subjects, actually Charles Darwin, said it was as distinct as if I had the photos before me. But a few people couldn't visualise the table at all. Fast forward to the early 2000s, when neurologists at the University of Exeter encountered patient MX, a Scottish man who lost his ability to visualise things after surgery. When MX was in an fMRI machine, researchers showed him a picture of then Prime Minister Tony Blair and asked questions like, does he have large ears? Well, yes. As expected, they saw normal activity in his visual areas. Next, they asked him to imagine Blair's face. They expected to see similar brain activity, but instead many areas were active, including those used for semantic retrieval. MX was trying to imagine a face, but in a non-visual way, using words instead of images. When that research was published in 2010, Carl Zimmer wrote this article for Discover magazine, and emails started rolling in from people who experienced the same thing, some since birth. The blind imagination of this group of emailers was the focus of a new paper published by the same researchers in 2015 who officially named this aphantasia. They found the majority of the group couldn't conjure up a mental image at will, but they still had flashes of vision, perhaps in dreams. Most said they had some trouble remembering past events, and most discovered their aphantasia in their teens or twenties. Like, I'm a grown-up, and I didn't realize till recently that visualize, um, like, to terms like mind's eye, I thought they were euphemisms, like maybe a quirk of the English language. It felt like not realizing that I was colorblind. Right, wow. From here, Carl Zimmer again wrote about this new paper. SciShow posted a video on it, and the researchers received close to a thousand emails from people who just heard of aphantasia and believed they have it, similar to Andy. As the lead researcher put it, attesting it to the popular interest and relative obscurity of the fascinating variation of human experience. But why is the human experience so varied? Well, we don't know. But scientists are digging deeper into aphantasia using brain imaging. The story of aphantasia shows us that we can all contribute to our understanding of how the brain works and how you work. And we're coming a little bit closer to finding out why some of us can visualize a double rainbow in the first place. What does this mean? Oh, 
Now, just before you go, I wanted to thank Curiosity Stream for supporting PBS Digital Studios. They're a subscription streaming service that have extensive originals and documentaries from the world's best filmmakers. Now, you can get unlimited access if you go to curiositystream.com forward slash Braincraft and use the code Braincraft during the sign up process to get two months for free. Is the microphone working? It's hard to say. Hard to say.